Hello and welcome to Mr. and Mrs. Social Studies. My name is Sarah and in today's video I want to talk about winding down this year and a few things you might want to take care of or think about now that the school year is coming to a close. I did put together a video like this last year but as the school year has looked so different this year compared to traditional years. I thought I would modify my tips a bit so they pertain more to digital teaching, distance learning, remote teaching, whatever you're calling it, what we've been going through the last couple months. First up, and probably most important, allow yourself to feel whatever emotions you're feeling. It's kind of been like a roller coaster, at least for me. There are certain days I feel really good or that things are going at least as good as they can be. And there are other days for no clear reason, I just feel off or sad or maybe feeling kind of lazy. Whatever the case is, there's definitely been more of a range of emotions felt in this time period than normally. And whatever you're feeling as we near the end of the year, just honor those feelings. Maybe it's a mix of emotions as well. Maybe you will feel some relief to be done with being on your computer for so many hours a day. Maybe there is the feeling of just something missing or that you didn't get a chance to end the year like you wanted. Maybe there's the nostalgia feeling for how previous school years felt when you were able to do a lot of those fun activities with your kids. Like I've said in my past videos, this was not something we were prepared for. So just be good to yourself and promote self-care as much as possible during these different times. Tip number two will vary, and that is to close out the year as you see fit with your students. Now this could be a district policy. I know there are different district events happening or maybe setting things up for pickup, end of the year bags, but maybe you want to have certain video sign off. Maybe you want to send e-cards to your students or actually mail them letters. Maybe you'll be sending emails to your students or personal emails to your students. It really depends, but just give yourself that closure, even if it's something small. I know last year I did personally write letters to all my students and that felt really meaningful to me, but obviously that doesn't necessarily make sense for, for everyone to do, and that can be a time-consuming process. So just figure out what the right way is for you to finish out the year and put a little bit of closure on it, even though it didn't go as planned. Tip number three is to do a brain dump of any ideas that you have or any thoughts you have related to next year. One thing that I have found is sometimes over the course of the summer, I forget the things that were on my mind when the school year was wrapping up. And then in August, I'm trying to remember, what was that that I wanted to try this year? Anything that's on your mind, keep track of it. And one great strategy to start if you haven't already, or at least start next year, I like to keep a Google Doc with just miscellaneous teaching ideas. And that's something I can return to gradually if it's something I don't want to forget. This also works great if you want to avoid having a lot of clutter on your desk. I used to be kind of a post-it note girl. Still sometimes I do find a post-it note is what makes the most sense, but having a centralized document ready to go where I keep all of my thoughts and changes just makes things a lot easier and I'm less likely to forget what those thoughts or ideas were. Write these down while they're fresh in your mind so you can clear your mind going into summer vacation. Tip number four will vary a bit because I know that different districts have certain guidelines about how you pack up your classroom. Maybe you have limited time. Maybe you're not really even able to go in except for one certain day. It obviously varies, but while you are in that process of packing things up, think really intentionally about the items and what you're doing with them. I think it is times of crisis where we can reevaluate our belongings in our classrooms and decide, you know, does this really matter? Does this still need to be here? Recycle or discard anything that is not going to be of value in the future. Maybe you have some ungraded work that happened, you know, back from March whenever schools were starting to shut down. Maybe you have excessive piles that you thought you would need, but then you, you didn't end up needing anymore. Maybe there are old projects that never got passed back. Maybe there's a classroom display of yours that's just a mess or it's falling apart. Just take that stuff down. Give yourself as much of a fresh start as possible for the future. Doesn't mean you have to worry about those spaces right now, but just any type of that stuff that you can let go of and move on for the next year, I think you'll find beneficial, especially come August or September. 
Tip number five is to pick a small decluttering project related to your classroom to bring home with you to work on over the summer. This could be something small, such as a few reference materials that you have in your classroom or old teacher guides and teacher materials, maybe from a past teacher or that someone passed on to you and you just accepted because you felt like that was the only choice you had. Maybe it's digital files. Maybe the downloads folder on your computer or your desktop is a mess and needs to be dealt with. Taking one of these small decluttering projects and working through that is a great way for us to open up some space both in terms of physical space in the classroom as well as just mental metaphorical space or clarity um, within us. I think it's very common as teachers to feel like we have to hold on to everything so tightly or that we can't let go of items. But I know when I have gone through my classroom materials, I have found that the items that we were saving often had very little value later on. Think about how much teaching has changed in your career. I know in our relatively short career, we've seen so many changes and a lot of the items have been obsolete. And related to this topic, if you are looking to do more decluttering of your classroom in the future, I was actually planning on putting together some materials this spring. Obviously that didn't happen because of school closings, but in the fall, I will be sharing those. So make sure you've subscribed to the channel if you haven't already done so, just so you are notified when we share those bonus materials. Idea number six is to set aside some time for some personal or professional growth during the summer. Now I know for Jake and I, one of our favorite things to do is travel. And that's been one of the ways we've been able to seek new experiences and learn new information from the places we visited to bring back to the classroom. Unfortunately, this summer is actually our first that we're not doing any travel just because of COVID and all of that. But there are still so many other ways that we can continue to learn and grow. And I find that it's really helpful, even if it's not directly related to your content area that you teach, to seek new experiences or new knowledge as a lifelong learner um, to be able to then share with your students. So whether that's maybe books that you want to read, documentaries you want to watch, honestly, even virtual museum tours and virtual opportunities and experiences or conferences that are happening this summer can be a great way to do that. Finally, tip number seven is to make sure you give yourself plenty of time to disconnect and unplug. If you feel anything like us, you have spent so much more time on your computer or on your device in the last few months than before. Normally when I was in my classroom, I would be maybe in front of my computer a few times here and there checking emails or doing my attendance, but really I was with the kids and interacting with them, not glued to a screen. But obviously things have looked differently. So be sure to give yourself that extra time away from screens. Do a digital detox if you want. Take one day a week that's screen free, such as a screen free Saturday. And on that day, challenge yourself, no phone, no computer, maybe no TV or anything like that. Give yourself the time off, focus on cultivating those hobbies and interests that don't pertain to a screen. And I think you'll find that's really helpful for balances. And perhaps then you can put your attention in other places, such as learning a new skill or spending time with your loved ones. That wraps up my tips for this video, but feel free to subscribe to the channel or check out some of our past videos here. And good luck as you wind down the rest of this school year and have a great summer. Bye.